In this question, we're told that the initial wave function starts off in a state where you're equally likely to find uh, the particle anywhere in the left half of the well. So first of all, we need to find the initial wave function. So let's draw a diagram to visualize what exactly the wave function would look like. So this is the initial wave function at time equal to zero. So uh, we told that, so this is zero, this is a. So this region is the entire infinite square well. And then we're told that we're equally likely to find it in the left half of the well. So the function actually looks something like this. So there is there are no bumps here because you're equally likely to find it anywhere in this region. So uh, I'm going to let this point here be a. We don't know what a is at this moment. It's just a constant. So this is what the infinite square well would look like. So if you write this out, you'll see that your function is equal to something like this. So a is for the range when x is between a and a over 2. And then at 0, at this point, you're not going to find it in the right half uh, at the start for the initial wave function. So it's 0 for a over 2 all the way to a. So this is what the wave function is going to look like. And then uh, the second step we need to do is, is that we need to normalize this so that we know that if we apply this uh, formula over here, because this is a probability. So if we square this, this is the probability density. And because of this, uh, if you integrate this throughout from 0 to a, you know that this is going to be equal to 1. So you just apply this formula directly. So from a to a over 2, the wave function is equal to this constant a squared. And then from a over 2 to a is just equal to 0, so we can ignore that. And then this is just a constant, so the integral you just have a over 2 equal to 1. So in the end, you know that a is equal to the square root of 2 over a. So the answer to part a is that the initial wave function is equal to something like this. So this is your answer to part a. So now that we found the initial wave function, we can do part b. And then we want to find the probability that a measurement of energy would yield this result. And then if you'll notice the formula for the energy states of an infinite square, well, this actually corresponds to the first uh, energy state, E1. So we need to find the probability that uh, a measurement would yield E1. So uh, first of all, we call that for a wave function, the entire expression looks something like this. So you have your time component. And then the probability that you will, you, you will uh, arrive at the uh, nth st uh, energy state is equal to c n squared, right? This is proven in the book. So in our case, we, need to, we want to find the probability that we can find the first, we, uh, after a measurement, we will get the uh, first energy state. So that's why the probability that we're trying to find is c1 squared. So the way to do this is that we're going to use Fourier's trick to deduce what c1 should be. So we're going to take a look at the case when t is equal to 0. And then as you can tell, when t is equal to 0, this term is just going to be equal to 1. And then we're going to use Fourier trick. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the first stationary state. And choosing the first stationary state is that because we're trying to find c1 over here. And then I'm going to integrate both sides. So dx. And then thanks to Fourier trick, for all n that is not equal to 1, they're all equal to 0. So the only term left is c1 times the integral of, uh, of the square of this first stationary state. And then by definition, this is just going to be equal to 1. So if you integrate if you integrate this expression here, this is just equal to 1. So this is what you get on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have this integral over here. And uh, you know that it's going to go from a 0 to a over 2, because this is the initial wave function. Everywhere else is just equal to 0, except from 0 to a over 2. So this is the only uh, component that uh, where it's not equal to 0. So you have your initial wave function, which is square root of 2 over a, times the first stationary state, which is square root of 2 over a times sine. So n pi x over 2. n is equal to 1, so you get pi x over 2 dx. So now we can solve this integral to find our c1. So c1 is equal to this integral. And then the polar constant is out, 2 over a. And then we have a sine pi over ax dx. So now let's try to integrate this so we get negative cosine pi over ax. Then we flip the constants, a over pi. So from 0 to a over 2. So substituting uh, a over 2, we got 
So I'm going to pull the a over pi out first, the, the, the constant. So substituting this in, we get cosine pi over 2. And then minus negative cosine 0, which is cosine 0 is 1, so minus negative 1. And the cosine pi over 2, if you look at the graph of a cosine function, pi over 2 corresponds to this part over here, so it's equal to 0. So all we're left with is this positive 1, so the answer is equal to 2 over pi. So going back to what we're looking for, we're looking for the probability, which is equal to the uh, c1 squared. So the probability is equal to c1 squared, which is equal to 4 over pi squared. So this is our answer. And then if you plug this into a calculator, you see that this is equal to 0 0.4053. So this is another way to express your answer.